you get to be quiet while I'm done. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm really looking forward to today's video. This is all about how to stop living on autopilot mode. Three years ago, I read a study that terrified me from the inside out. It was a deep dive on decision-making habits and regret. We as a society have learned a lot about the science of habit formation and decision-making over the last few years. Not least of which is that the majority of all of the choices that we make are not conscious decisions. As you go throughout your day, you're constantly making choices that you're not even aware of. Some of these are small things in and of themselves, but they add up over time, and some of them aren't small at all. One of the most terrifying bits of information I have ever heard is the fact that most people spend most of their lives in what researchers call an autopilot mode. They exist in a state of going through the motions, making major life decisions based on unconscious beliefs about what is expected of them and not what they truly want or are made for. When I first started researching this, I think I had this mental picture of like a middle-aged guy in a suit, like miserable life, traveling up the corporate ladder, stuck in a nine to five that, you know, wasn't really what he really wanted. And I mean, I'm sure that that's probably true for some people, but autopilot mode isn't always that like much of a stereotype. And autopilot mode doesn't wait to set in until you're married and stable and already set in a career path. You can run on autopilot mode in high school, or when you're choosing your major, applying to post-secondary, pursuing a certain career path. You can be on autopilot mode when you're choosing who to marry and when. This is terrifying. Learning this information literally altered the course of my life. I have since Coming across this study three years ago, I have literally dedicated my career and life and so much time to reading, writing, and learning about how to live opposite this idea and how to live a life on purpose. Intentional living isn't just another word for minimalism or simplicity. It's not a fad or a hashtag or even just a mindset. It is an absolutely essential way of life. So if you feel like you're stuck like this, or you might be living on autopilot mode, going through the motions, operating without a clear and exciting vision for your life, this video is for you. If you watched my recent video all about how I'm organizing my entire life for 2023, you would have heard me talk about the importance of knowing what matters most. Here's the thing. Every single day, you're faced with an insane amount of choices about where you invest your time and energy. And while we don't always like to talk about it, the exclusivity of choice is a very important part of our reality. You can't have it all. You can't prioritize every relationship, invest in every career opportunity, pursue every hobby or skill that might pique your interest. Humans are both extremely capable and entirely limited. Fighting the truth of this is not only unproductive, but dangerous. It's easy enough for us to decide what matters or not in life. That doesn't mean we always have healthy boundaries with it or schedule our time and lives accordingly, but the choice of whether or not something matters is usually pretty straightforward. You can tell if a relationship is important by just thinking about it or an activity, a chore, a passion, whatever. But the point where we often get stuck is asking what matters most. I truly believe that this is the most important question you can ever ask yourself. Because until you know with confidence what it is that matters most, you will continue to invest in things that don't. I don't say this from a place of having it all figured out. I really, really don't. This is a journey that I've been on for three years and I am 100% confident I'll be on for the rest of my life. I share it passionately because it's made such a huge difference for me and I think it can do the same for everyone else. Your life is your own and you only get one. So the way that you live it matters. Something that's helped me a lot has been actually specifically clarifying what my non-negotiable priorities are. They're things that I build my life around rather than trying to fit in where it's easy or comfortable. So personally for me, that's my faith, my marriage, and my purpose. Before making any remotely significant life decisions or altering my daily routines in any way, I hold up any changes against these three like pillars of my life and see whether they help cultivate, contribute to, or contradict these ultimate like values, priorities in my life. This is not something that I have done perfectly, but I have come a long way with it. Um, I'm getting better. And over time, one of the really cool things that I've noticed is because I have actively consciously practiced this so much, it's starting to become a habit and instinctual where I'm finding myself asking the question or saying no to things that would conflict with those ideas without even thinking about it. The intentional aspect of it is requiring less energy um, from me. It's starting to become unintentional, 
in a way that allows me to then reinvest that energy back into looking at other areas of my life. So I think that's very cool. Knowing what matters most is huge. Getting a clear picture of what you want to base your life around is incredible, but it is just step one to stop living on autopilot. In order to fully break free, you have to actually snap yourself out and take action. I would say that I'm very much a dreamer. My whole life I've envisioned wild adventures and experiences and always wanted to chase those things. But at times in my life, I have also been a very fearful person. I have put off a lot of dreams and goals because keeping them in my head felt much safer and more comfortable for me. I planned on starting a YouTube channel in November of 2021, um, a couple months before my book came out and then I waited until September 2022 to do it because to be honest, it scared the crap out of me. And not only did it take me until September, it took me until every single person that I'm close to in my life was like, have you ever thought about starting a YouTube channel? Cause you should start a YouTube channel and me being like, oh, okay, I think it's time. I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. And I really feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. But I also don't feel like I can take credit for getting myself here. Sometimes I genuinely feel like the Lord dragged me kicking and screaming through a door that I was terrified of just because I didn't know what was on the other side. I am eternally grateful for this grace that I've ended up here regardless because I don't deserve it and it's incredibly humbling that even in my weakness, the Lord brought me to where I needed to be. I know this won't apply to everyone um, or all wired differently and you might be the kind of person who just jumps head first into their dreams, never any hesitation. They're like, I know what I want and I'm on it. And that's amazing. I'm so jealous, so impressed by you. But if not, um, as someone who's been there and gets it and still sometimes struggles with perpetual imposter syndrome, I just wanna tell you that experiencing temporary setbacks or failures in the pursuit of a life on purpose is so worth it. Also, from a scientific and philosophical standpoint, you cannot learn without, like in any sense or area, you can't learn new information or experiences without first being uncomfortable. You have to step out of what you know before you can experience something different. And that's not always easy or fun, but truthfully, the greatest things I've ever learned all came from seasons of great discomfort. I don't miss the experience, but I'm grateful for it. And in hindsight, I would do it again. All that to say, take the risk, live your life, fall in love, all the cheesy stuff. If you know what matters most, go all in. The next step in breaking free of living on autopilot mode is to assess and reframe your routine. Okay, so as previously mentioned, a lot of the life that you live is made up of unconscious decisions. That's not going to change. There's a certain level to which your brain organizes your day based on habits that that's just always going to be there. Our habits make up our routines, which make up our day to day, which compound and create our entire lives. The really great news though, is that you're watching this video here in the modern era where we have so much information or so much more information than we've had previously about how this works. Habits are fundamentally driven by what's called the habit loop or habit cycle, or there's a bajillion different names for it, but it's a circle. And essentially what happens is that your brain experiences a cue, a behavior and a reward. If you've taken any high school psychology classes, this is very straightforward. Essentially, your brain experiences a desire or a craving. Let's say you're in a rough mood or you've had a bad day or whatever. Your brain might want a little hit of dopamine. Your routine or behavior is the action, the habit that you use to fill that need. So that could be turning on Netflix, grabbing a snack, hitting the gym, shopping online. The reward is the dopamine hit that, that activity produces. It's important to be very clear that the cycle is not bad. It's literally just how your brain works. This is the way that the brain actually saves you a ton of energy over time. When you repeat a pattern, it does everything that it can to minimize the effort that it costs you. By doing that over time, it eliminates the conscious thought you put behind it. This is also why the idea of breaking habits is complex and actually very, very challenging. Breaking a habit cycle or trying to break a habit cycle doesn't actually make nearly as much sense as it would to try and replace an unhealthy behavior in a habit cycle with a better alternative. For example, if the way that you currently tend to unwind is by binge watching TV, and let's say that's not conducive to your ultimate priorities and the kind of life you wanna live, you might wanna replace that with something that does. Habits are much simpler than often assumed, but they do take time to shift. If you've had a pattern in place for a while, it's gonna take some time to rewire your brain. 
One of the biggest mistakes I made way too early on in my journey of intentional living was trying to completely change my lifestyle overnight. I flew too close to the sun, tried to do way too much too fast and fell on my face. There's like that people say, oh, it takes 21 days to change a habit. That's not really true. Um, it's not not true. It just, it doesn't really work like that. How long it takes to change habits depends on how long you've had the habit, how strong the neural pathway is in your brain for the old cycle, and also how many times you repeat the new habit. But essentially, it happens through slow, consistent, repeated behavior change. What habits you'll want to build or not depends entirely on what it is that matters the most to you, which is why knowing what it is that matters most is an essential first step. Also, if you're new here, I literally just moved across the country. I'm moving into a new apartment in like eight days. Um, and I have no routine right now, which is driving me nuts. So I'm gonna be filming a bunch of videos as I'm trying to build a healthy routine. Um, like in the next few weeks. So if this is something that you are feeling really inspired or encouraged by, definitely make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of those videos coming. So soon, I'm also gonna be doing more videos on my planning system and my productivity system. So if any of that's your thing, I really think that the first big steps to stop living on autopilot are the above three that we just went through. Knowing what it is that matters most to you, taking action, and then building routines that are aligned with your priorities. Since I started the process of trying to live on purpose, I have built a ton of systems to help cultivate that kind of life that I want to live. These systems have been extremely helpful and beneficial through the process. Having systems in place gives me more time and energy to invest back into the things that matter most. They also help me stay organized in accordance to my priorities and overall just add a lot of joy to my life. A huge thing for me has been implementing monthly resets. Taking time once a month to reflect, regroup, and kind of have an at a glance look at what life is going to look like for the month ahead. It gives me so much peace of mind. I've had an incredibly chaotic year, um, and when I've been able to actually sit down and do this for the months ahead, I just feel so much more prepared and calm and in control. And like overall, it's just been a huge blessing to my mental health. It honestly feels like self-care. <laughs> I'm actually filming my monthly reset routine for December um, and I'll be uploading it on November 30th. So if you want to do a monthly reset with me, make sure to click the subscribe button and we can kind of reset for the holiday season together. Another really big change that I've made has been implementing digital planning and completely changing the way I've organized my whole life. I just uploaded a video kind of going over this, so I'll put a link on the screen somewhere here. Um, that'll go way more in depth on that. Also, if you're a reader, I actually wrote a book about this that goes way more in depth. It is available on Amazon now. Um, the link will be in the description box if you do wanna check it out. I'm also going to link a few other books that I found extremely helpful and transformative during this process in the description box. So, if, uh, so you can also look those up if you'd like. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, definitely let me know if you wanna hear more about intentional living um, or organization or anything like that. So happy to talk about it. This is like my favorite thing to talk about. So we could go all day long. I really appreciate you watching this video. It seriously means the world to me. I filmed an outro for this video, but apparently I didn't click record while I was filming it, which is definitely not ideal. So I apologize for the terrible lighting. It's late in the evening and I'm just trying to get this video up for you guys. But I really hope that you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to give a thumbs up if you did. It really helps out my channel. So it would mean the world to me and leave a comment letting me know one thing that you're excited for in the next week or so. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great day because today is a good day to have a good day and that's it. <laughs> Bye.